Instruct everyone to follow the orders of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. Please repeat. Instruct everyone, Instruct to, everyone, everyone to follow the orders of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita. And Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. Purport This is the sublime, sublime mission of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Many people come and inquire whether they have to give up family life to join the society. But that is not our mission. One can remain comfortably in his residence. We simply request everyone 
to chant the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If one is a little literate and can read Bhagavad Gita as it is in Srimad Bhagavatam, that is so much the better. These works are now available in an English translation and are done very authoritatively to appeal to all classes of men. Instead of living in gross material activities, people throughout the world should take advantage of this movement and chant the Hare Krishna mantra at home with their families. One should also refrain from sinful activities, illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, and intoxication. And these four items, illicit sex, is very sinful. Every person must get married, every woman especially must get married. If the women outnumber the men, some men can accept more than one wife. In that way, there will be no prostitution in society. If men can marry more than one wife, illicit sex will be stopped. One can also produce many nice preparations to offer for Krishna. Grain, fruit, flowers, and milk. Why should one indulge in unnecessary meat eating and maintain horrible slaughterhouses? What is the use of smoking and drinking tea and coffee? People are already intoxicated by material enjoyment. Have they indulged in further intoxication? What chance is there for self realization? Similarly, one should not partake in gambling and unnecessarily agitate the mind. The real purpose of human life is to obtain the spiritual platform and return to Godhead. That is the sonam bonum of spiritual realization. The Krishna consciousness movement is trying to elevate human society to the perfection of life by pursuing the method described by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His advice to the Brahmin Kurma, this, that is, one should stay at home chant the Hare Krishna mantra, and preach the instructions of Krishna as they were given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. For the text again. Yari deka tarika Krishna upadesh amara aga guruhana tare desh. Instruct everyone to follow the orders of Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. Om Vishnu Braya Krishna Prasthaya Buddhaya Shri Madhe Bhakti Vedanta Swarna Dhanamane Namaste Sarasudam Deve Gaur Vani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shri Vani Pascatyade Vedanta So this is what Prabhupada emphasizes when he was present on the planet, he spent his time training his disciples to be guru. Just like now, everyone is being trained to be, be guru, especially in this sense, yari deka, that whoever we meet, then our meditation should be how to help the person become Krishna conscious. Actually, our relationship is not primarily with material bodies, it's with spiritual souls. Those who are devotees of Krishna, their relationship should be primarily on the spiritual platform. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hastani Shuni Chaiva Svapakecha Pandita Samadarshanaha that the learned and gentle Brahma, uh, the, the, the learned sages, the humble, the learned, uh, let's see, is it? The humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with an equal vision the learned and gentle Brahman, the cow, the elephant, and the dog eater. I guess it should be the humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with an equal vision the learned and gentle Brahman, the cow, the elephant, and the dog eater. So that's how we're supposed to see things. We're supposed to be sages. Which is even beyond what 
Chanaka Pandit says, is a learned person. He says, Matrivat Paradareshu Paradwareshu Lustrava Atmavan Sarabhuteshu Yakpashati Sapanditaha. He says that a learned person, a pandit, sees every lady except for his wife to be just like his mother. And conversely, every lady should see every man except for her husband to just be like her son. And one should see everyone else's property to be just like garbage in the street. And one should see every living entity just like one's very self. That is, everyone is a spiritual being, and I'm also a spiritual being. But beyond that, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhoktaram Jagatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshram Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatvamam Shantim Richati. From the spiritual point of view, beyond even what a, a Brahman sees, he sees everything as Krishna's property. We're not just seeing everything except for my property to be like garbage in the street. I'm also seeing my property to be Krishna's property, what I think is my property. And we're not only just seeing every lady to be just like a mother, or except for a wife, and every, husband, every man to be just like a, a son, except for our husband, but we're seeing all of the entities as Krishna's eternal servants, and that ourselves as a servant of every living entity. And when Prabhupada was in Stockholm giving a lecture, he mentioned that there were four orders of society and the Brahmins of the learned class, etc., etc. So one man, when it's time for questions and answers, he said, so you think you're a first class man? So Prabhupada said, no, I'm fifth class, because I'm servant of all the other classes. <laughs> so the humble sages, so we're not just supposed to be learned and gentle, we're also supposed to be humble and an actual real sage, see everyone as Krishna's eternal servant, and therefore see ourselves as Krishna's servant also. Since everyone else is Krishna's servant, I am also Krishna's servant. So everyone is calling me Prabhu or Dasi. So that, does that mean I become Prabhu? I finally joined a society where everyone re recognizes that I'm the master. <laughs> no, one should realize that I'm also, everyone else to me is Prabhu. So I'm the servant of everyone. So that makes a nice combination. Everyone is thinking themselves to be the servant of Krishna in the civil succession. And therefore, realizing that the best that I can become is an instrument for Krishna. Therefore, Krishna is the real friend of others, and I can become others' friends if I become Krishna's instrument. And here it says, become Krishna's instrument, we should meditate on how we can help others understand that Krishna is the actual controller, Krishna is the actual enjoyer, and Krishna is the real friend of everyone. Not that I'm the actual controller, and I'm the enjoyer, and I'm your friend. We may even give up the idea that I'm the controller. That's the mode of ignorance. We think I'm the doer, I'm the controller. Now I've admitted that I'm a spiritual soul. I can recognize that. Now I've given up the idea of becoming the enjoyer, exploiting others, but it's even more difficult to give up the idea that I'm the deliverer, that I'm the real friend of others. That because I've made so much advancement and because of my realizations, and therefore I'm delivering others by repeating my realizations. Actually, I'm being delivered along with others when Krishna uses me as an instrument to help others become Krishna conscious. And if I'm not being used in it as an instrument to help others becoming Krishna conscious, then I'm being used as an instrument by Maya to put me in, in Maya. And maybe to influence others to also be in Maya to some degree or another. 
course, it's up to others whether or not they're going to accept my association and being in the same kind of maya I'm in. Or it's up to them whether or not they're going to accept the association of Krishna when I become Krishna's instrument. But that's my duty to become Krishna's instrument to help others become Krishna conscious. Now that does not mean now I become an instrument to become help others become Krishna conscious. So I'm guru, so they should celebrate my Vyas Puj because I'm helping them become Krishna conscious. No, there may be different types of authorities so that are, we're given different positions just to help others become Krishna conscious. Not for our sense gratification, not that I should become a mother or a father or a worshipable person or a guru for my sense gratification, as Rishabdev says, that was that uh, one should not become a father and not nasyat nasyat pita nasyat daivam nasyat swajini nasyat. Pitana says yes, Vajanina says yes, Yaksum Pakti Mrityu. That one should take up these positions to help others become Krishna conscious. So the basic principle is whatever service we have is to help others become Krishna conscious. If I become a guru, it's not that I should think myself guru, I should think myself Krishna's servant, and I'm taking this position to help others become Krishna conscious. Now there may be different types of guru. As a matter of fact, there is more than one type of guru. There's Shiksha guru, there's Diksha guru, there's Bhartma Pradaksha guru. But essentially they're all instruments for Krishna. And there may be to some distinction, like the initiating guru that gives mantras and that more or less is supposed to be a shraya for the disciple. The first manifestation of Krishna, the basic manifestation, who gives shelter. And the shiksha gurus teach one how to take advantage of that shelter. But they're all equal representatives of Krishna. Now, amongst the Diksha Gurus or Shiksha Gurus, there's also distinction because the shelter they give is primarily by Shiksha. So there may be self-realized Shiksha Gurus. Uh, there may be not as self-realized Shiksha Gurus. In other words, when they actually realize Krishna, if I'm actually directly, in, if I can, am actually directly perceiving Krishna then that's called self-realization, because then I know what my identity is in relation to Krishna. If I don't know my rasa in relation to Krishna, I don't have a spiritual form, I don't know who my spiritual form is, then I haven't fully realized Krishna. We can't say, say I'm directly in the sunlight, but I can't see myself. On the other hand, if I know I'm Krishna Das, and I act as Krishna Das, then Krishna will re reveal himself to me in proportion that I know myself to be Krishna Das, Dasa Dasa Anudasa, and I'm acting as Krishna Dasa Anudasa. Uh, and therefore my instructions will help others become also Krishna Das and Krishna Dasa Anudasa. My example and my instructions. But Prabhupada writes, the Acharya in the full sense of the term who is authorized to deliver Krishna, enriches the disciple with full spiritual knowledge and thus awakens him to the activities of devotional service. So to some degree, all of us can act, if we strictly follow, as Prabhupada writes in one letter, the instructions from disciple succession, we can act as initiating gurus in the future. But we should always remember that I can only act as, instru as an instructing or initiating guru as much as I'm strictly following the instructions of the previous acharyas and repeating that, that message. Otherwise, we have no capacity to say something better than Krishna did. If the knowledge is actually coming into succession, then it's actually coming from Krishna. 
And if we think we have something better to say than Krishna, then we've joined the wrong movement. And if we think Krishna's instructions don't apply to me, then I'm also, I joined the wrong movement. Therefore, everyone is obliged within the society to become guru, some kind of guru, but it doesn't really matter what kind of guru we have, we are. It just, that will be the relationship that we're, the, those who are trying to serve will, have, will perceive us as. For instance, if we're a mother, we're a guru to our children. Now, our children may be, by some inexplicable good fortune, surrendered to our divine instructions coming into civil succession, or they may be rascals. <laughs> that doesn't mean I give up my position as mother because my children won't listen to me. As Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, as we've heard, was asked, how many disciples do you have? He said he has four. So the person was quite amazed. It seems like you have so many more disciples than four. He said, no, I have four, two hands and two legs, because at least they listen to me. <laughs> so it's not a question whether or not others listen to, him, to me or not. Of course, it's expected the child will follow the mother, as a matter of fact, or the father. As a matter of fact, we can see whether we like it or not, the child follows the father and mother. Mostly their example, more than their instructions. If the father and mother say don't smoke, and they're smoking like a chimney, <laughs> then generally the child grows up, and sooner or later they'll start to smoke, following the example of their father and mother. Similarly, the husband should act as guru to the wife. He should set the example, not that I'm guru, therefore in the house I have to sit on a, bi on a bigger seat than you do, and you celebrate my Vyas Puj. <laughs> no, it means that the husband should try to help the wife become Krishna conscious. That's the job of Guru. Somehow or another, set the example by chanting Hare Krishna, by following the regular principles, by, take, off, by worshiping the deity. That means that one is acting as Guru and encourage, inspire the wife to do the same thing. Sometimes the wife may have to act as Guru to the husband. If the husband is not so inspired to chant Hare Krishna, follow the regular principles, and sometimes the wife has to act as the spiritual master. Of course, the wife also has to think, I have to be guru for my husband. I have to set the proper example. I have to say things in such a way that will inspire my husband to become more and more a devotee of Krishna. And that way, we can make some progress in devotional service. Now, in our society, we have an interesting phenomena that we've, though after Prabhupada's disappearance, some of our devotees took up the role of initiating spiritual masters. And not all of them agree with each other on every subject. So the question is, if there's only one guru, namely Krishna, ultimately, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, in, well, as Shubhyasa, as, as Krishna Askaraj Goswami says, Shiksha Guru Ke, Krishna Swarup, a Krishna Swarup, Antaryami Bhakti Shrestha, a Duru. Now, one should know this, the best of the devotees uh, and the super soul is my very self as Krishna Saru. In other words, the super soul is in everyone's heart. He's instructing everyone. Sometimes if we have the good fortune of coming in contact with a bona fide guru, then he'll give us he'll remind us of their our bona fide guru's instructions and therefore we have the opportunity to serve Krishna. It is not that I'm going to jump over my guru and I'm going to have an opportunity to serve Krishna. Uh, Krishna doesn't accept that. We have to serve the Guru in disciple succession. 
Now, those who don't have a guru in disciple succession, they may sometimes, that is, they may accept the guru in disciple succession, even without initiation, if they want, if they actually agree to follow his instructions. That's the real following, that's the real accepting of the guru. Not just sitting down for the fire sacrifice, throwing some grains in, hope that all my sinful activities will be accepted by the guru. My service is secondary. I'll give a little service. But actually what I'm offering is my sinful activities to him. <laughs> and at the end, I'm pu- I, feel, I feel good. I feel enlivened because I'm purified. I, I wish the best for my initiating guru. <laughs> here's, a little, here's a little dakshin for the doctor bills. <laughs> In case you get some sinful reaction. <laughs> no, the actual initiation is to inspire us to try to understand and actually accept ourselves as a servant of Krishna and disciple succession. Now, if there's many varieties of opinions, especially about significant subjects, not whether a pizza is better than ice cream, that's not one of our deep spiritual subjects that we have to, my guru says this, my guru says that. That's not one of the significant subject matters. Uh, one significant subject matter may be Guru Tattva, for instance, who's actually qualified to be guru and what kind of guru we are. Just like I'm saying, Prabhupada was saying, at the end of 1977, when Prabhupada was just about to leave his body in his manifested pastimes, then some Indian gentlemen, they came and they wanted to speak to Srila Prabhupada alone. And Prabhupada agreed. And at the end of the conversation, the disciples came back and wanted to find out why, what did they want to speak to Prabhupada about. So they, they wanted to ask Prabhupada, who will be the next Acharya? Acharya meaning, as it says, as I just quoted, Acharya in the true sense of the term, who is authorized to deliver Krishna, enriches the disciple with full spiritual knowledge, and thus awakens him to the activities of devotional service. So generally speaking, everyone wants to find out who's the Acharya. Who knows who's the perfect person, whose every word, every glance, every thought, is completely under Krishna's direction. And when Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada left the planet, the disciples, they decided, some of them decided, we'll choose the Sacharya. And as a matter of fact, they chose a very qualified person, relatively more qualified than anyone else, who Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada praised very highly as the Acharya. Unfortunately, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada didn't think this particular devotee qualified to be the Acharya, and therefore he advised them to form a GBC body. Now, they, as Prabhupada said, they didn't agree with Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, which immediately, when you don't agree with the Acharya, you become a Sara. You're cut off from the Krishna and the disciple succession. So the Gaudi Mas serves us as an example what it means when we want to artificially choose someone as an Acharya who's actually not qualified or not authorized. Even this particular devotee, say, was authorized to be the Acharya and part of their mat. He wasn't authorized. The GB, he was the GBC, he was what Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada had decided to be formed to, to manage the society, his society at that time. And then he said later on, when someone is seen to be a perfectly self-realized person, the GBC can recognize that person as the Acharya. So whether this person was qualified at that time or not, he wasn't authorized by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada to become the Acharya, and therefore the whole society of the Gaudi Math became more or less disturbed and disintegrated to the best, to the most part. They stopped their preaching. The mission stopped. They didn't stop preaching, 
for they started to preach in order to get, as Srila Prabhupada said, or Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada said, it became a giant mess. Mess, of course, in English means uh, something that's very messy, but also in, from the English point of view, from England, it meant a joint mess means where people just to get together to eat. It's called a mess. In the army, it's called a mess. And a joint mess is everyone gets together to eat. So they made transcendental plans how to get rice and chapatis, dal and chapatis. So principally, that became their objective. Track people, initiate them, and they give some donation, offer the, the, the food to the deity, and we eat nicely. And we have a nice mutt, a temple to sleep in. But that's not what Srila Prabhupada wanted. That's not what our acharyas want. That's not what Krishna wants. He wants us, whoever we meet, to help them become Krishna conscious. And therefore, the, if there is many different opinions, then they should resolve those opinions privately, not voice them publicly as much as possible, and that ultimately the GBC should try to figure out what is the best possible understanding that we have at the present moment, realizing that as long as we don't have self-realized persons within the society, there may be different perspectives. That's not bad. To have variety is not bad. But it's bad if we claim to be acharyas, that everyone has to follow my instructions. Follow my instructions. No, this, it's this way, that way, that way. And everyone's, who's the acharya? Well, Prabhupada's instructions are the acharyas, and we have to humbly search through Prabhupada's instructions to the best of our ability. And when we figure out to the best of our ability what's the best way forward, because we can't go, we have to do something, then we do that. And then we learn from experience if we don't have perfect knowledge already. So that's basically it, that all of us who are supposed to work cooperatively and basically speaking our authorities until they discover or choose for some reason or another because it's not that we have to have an acharya within our society or else we can't go forward. It's almost like unless you're a perfect preacher then don't say anything. But that's not what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's, that's not his instruction. He wanted all of us to be guru. So when these Prabhupada came back, or the devotees came back, they said, what did you tell them, Prabhupada? He said, all my, I, all my disciples, they'll become the next in the disciples' succession. As much as they follow my instructions, they become the next guru. So everyone has the opportunity. Uh, that doesn't negate that if we choose a spiritual master, then according to the etiquette is the present understanding of our etiquette, the present authority that anyone has in the society, that we should act accordingly. But that doesn't mean that we don't see things ultimately from the point of view of Prabhupada's books and the point of view of those who are designated to actually take the role of the leader within the society. It's not that any individual can claim they have absolute authority within the society. Everyone is acting under the instructions of the GBC, and the GBC will be effective as much as they've tried to understand, assimilate, and follow Prabhupada's instructions, which means that they also have to take help from everyone else to understand things properly. Unless one is actually in, in touch with the super soul, it's not possible to make do everything perfectly. But that doesn't mean we're not all in touch with the super soul to some degree. We're in touch with the super soul as much as we've understood and we follow through the Prabhupada's instructions. And the instructions of those who repeat who have understood and and follow and are repeating Prabhupada's instructions. So it's not that the whole society should stop and wait for the Messiah, stop doing whatever it's doing and wait for the Messiah to come. The Messiah already came. Prophet has already come. He's given us the books, the instructions, the society to go forward with. And we should take advantage of it if we want to go back to the spiritual world and help others go back to the spiritual world too. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions?
Yes. Yeah, my question is from the paper where it said that every woman must be married, even one man can have more women. Can I explain that? Yes. We have to understand Prabhupada's books in, in a variety of ways. One is from the absolute point of view. Prabhupada gave us the Vedic culture from and the absolute point of view. So here in the purport, Prabhupada says that a man can take more than one wife if he's qualified. If it's legal also, there may be other factors like qualification, legality, and other factors too. <laughs> now Prabhupada, in his instructions to the devotees in the society at that particular time, <clears throat> He determined that neither he saw the men as qualified, nor he, nor he saw that it was, it was legal in most parts of the world. I don't know where it's legal to take more than one wife. There may be some place in the world. I think in India, if you're a Muslim, you could take more than one wife, but not if you're a Hindu. So some people converted to become a Muslim so they could take more than one wife. We don't recommend that, though. <laughs> but Prabhupada saw that the men in our society can't even handle one woman, but to speak of more than one woman. They can't support them, they can't direct, they, you know. So the Prabhupada said that generally speaking, they want more than one wife, not with the idea of helping them become Krishna conscious and supporting them, but for other reasons, to satisfy their own desires. So Prabhupada said it's, we don't, he forbid it, forbade it within our society. But that doesn't mean in the future, when we actually have qualified persons and we actually have a Vedic society where they recognize men can have more than one wife, that will, that will still adamantly say what Prabhupada said in 1976, a man can't have more than one wife within our society. No, here it says it would be desirable if it was properly you know, arranged. If the men was qualified, the women were qualified, the society was qualified, then it would be desirable. Is that clear? Yes, but today many women don't want to get men. Yeah, that's abnormal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, from my experience, I remember there was one lady, one Madhaji, initiated this devotee, and the women's the question of women's rights or something, liberation, or this whole question, you know. And I was giving a Bhagavatam class in the manor, and she was like completely getting on my case for saying that women should be subordinate to the men, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Women's rights. She was the leader of the women's rights movement in, in England at that time for the ladies and, the, and devo amongst the devotees. And lo and behold, within a couple of months, there was some camp and she was there and she fell in love with some man during the camp and that was the end of her women's rights. <laughs> so it's artificial. I mean, men, ladies would like to have children. That's normal. It's completely, that's how Christians arrange things. And when w ladies don't want to have children, they don't want to get married, they don't, you know, it's, it's just due to the artificial society we're living in. They have bad experience with their, generally they may have bad experience with their fathers, with their brothers, with any kind of authority figure. So it's just unfortunate that no one's trained up to be a proper authority. And the men, the prospective husbands, sometimes aren't trained up either. So therefore they, rather suffer being single than suffer getting married. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much. Karantara, Shimad, Bhagavatam, Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Gaur Primananda, Shri